Are you really even a gamer if you don't have a gaming phone? What are you playing on your PC? Psh, get out of here, man. <laughs> Asus is back with the Republic of Gamers ROG gaming phone number six. <laughs> and the six pro, which we have today. And then it just goes back down, okay. <laughs> There's so much going on in this box right now. How do I, okay, so that comes out, that's the phone. And then what's over here? This is a little card, join the Republic for those who dare. And I plug that into my cyberpunk motorcycle and then we go and it's Akira time. It seems like there's more moving parts that I wanna, hello? But it, I think the box reminds you of like just what we're dealing with here. None of this is function. It's all form, it's all fun. Maybe one of the most important things about this phone is that it's one of the first? Is it the first on the market with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, the top tier smartphone chip. It's exciting to see that chip debut in a phone that may properly be able to uh, take advantage of its performance. This is my Pixel 3. This is my Pixel 3 with a case on it. It is still a little bit thinner, but it's pretty close. Can you see that, Andy? So this is a chonky boy. And just like uh, the previous ROG phone models, or at least the, the last one, there's a display on the back on the 6 Pro. The 6, a non-pro, does not have a display. It has an illuminated RGB logo. Uh, let's start here because this is the this is the thing that kind of like defines the ROG gaming phone. This side-mounted USB-C port to make it a little bit easier to game and charge at the same time. They also have the one on the bottom, but the one on the side here is USB 3.1 Gen 2, and this one is just 2.0. But they both will get you fast uh, charging using the uh, included 65 watt adapter. Uh, but this one also uh, supports DisplayPort 1.4, so you can output video. SIM card slot? Because there is no SD card support. It comes with 512 uh, gigs of storage. On the top, we have nothing. Maybe a mic there or something. On this side, we got the volume rocker and the power button. And I guess these are like to denote the air triggers. Once again, for gaming. Over here, you got a headphone jack, yes! Ooh, as we turn it on, we got the display powering up on the back. On the back, we got 50 megapixel uh, with a Sony IMX766 <laughs> sensor. Everyone's waiting for me to say those numerical designations. Uh, next to that is the ultra wide, 13 megapixel ultra wide. And next to that is an interesting addition. It's a macro five megapixel sensor. This is for gamers, and gamers want to get really nice close-up shots of all their their uh, little chocobo mini figurines or the little uh, what are those things called? Funko Pops. And on the front we have a uh, 12 megapixel, also Sony sensor IMX663, which is why it was important for me to tell you about that first one. Don't forget it. But first, the true reason why we're here. <laughs> Thanks to Team Group for sponsoring this video. Team Group is currently giving away an exclusive set of their 32 gigabyte Delta RGB 6400 megahertz DDR5 RAM. It has support for Intel's XMP 3.0 one-click overclocking for ultra-fast speeds in a single click. And it features 120 degrees of ultra-wide RGB lighting with the clean geometric silhouette. Team Group will also be releasing a new Gen 5 SSD and an all-new AIO liquid cooler that will be able to cool your CPU and M.2 2280 SSD at the same time. Learn more about the giveaway and their Delta RGB DDR5 RAM at the link down below. One of the big things that I didn't say about the overall hardware of the phone is the screen. It's 165 hertz. Uh, display up from 144 hertz in the previous one, and it's got 720 hertz touch sampling rate. The end result isn't gonna be that much more noticeable. Like, look at that. And it's an AMOLED screen, HDR10+, and uh, I think it's 111% DCI-P3 color gamut coverage, which means that the color accuracy is gonna be pretty good. The ROG Phone 6 and 6 Pro can go up to 800 nits sustained brightness, 1200 peak. It's not quite to the level of other flagship phones that we're seeing now that have like a thousand nit brightness, sustained that is. So it's a one millisecond response time, I guess if you have a physical controller connected, but it's 23 milliseconds touch latency. What does that mean? It's got an AS coating that's supposed to reduce friction when hand sweating. You know when your hand's sweating? Okay, in the comments, if you know what an AS coating is, let us know. In here we got 
the Aeroactive Cooler. They've updated this mod a little bit for the uh, Gaming Phone 6 and 6 Pro. It's got extra buttons on here. I'm not sure whether the previous one had four buttons. They might've had two. But this one has a thermoelectric AI cooling system based on Peltier cooling chip. Peltier? There's also the Kunai 3 gamepad. Ooh, look at that case. That's nice. So this is like the Nintendo Switch thing where you have the phone and then you have these bumper controllers that are kind of like Joy-Cons. That's not what that is. Oh, you have to put this on the phone. Watch this. Slides in. These must be the Joy-Cons in a really cool case. Oh yeah, see, there it is. And then I can, this whole thing slides into that. Oh, it just clips in, cool. All right, so you can connect that to your phone. How do you, now how do you, oh, that's the release. Whoa, whoa. Oh, these are, these joysticks are legit too. Oh, look at that. I just plugged it in and it's automatically working. There's no pairing or anything. Successful system update. Thank you, sir. You know, I've got to say, I was pretty skeptical when I was like, are, are these gaming phones, do you really need that? But now that I'm holding it, I'm like, this is a pretty good experience. I don't know if I would pay $1,000, which is what it costs for the ROG Phone 6 and 1,300 euros slash USD for the uh, 6 Pro. If you are dropping that money, this is like a nice experience. I gotta say, like, this does not feel cheap. So let's strap this thing on. What is that? Look at, oh, it's a stand. This is cool. Okay, so you plug it in, you put that on the top, you clamp her down. You can still use that USB-C port. There's pass-through when you plug this thing in. That's awesome. So this is an interesting little bit of design here because most phones, you know, they won't really, they'll, they'll have the CPU of the phone, you know, wherever they can, it makes sense to fit it. But the ROG phone has the Qualcomm CPU right in the center of the phone. And then above that, they have a vapor chamber and a graphite sheet that kind of disperses the, the heat from the CPU and that helps uh, normally. But then when you strap this thing on, it kind of like amplifies the cooling power that's already there because of that setup. And on either side of the CPU, they have two 3000 milliamp hour batteries. So you got a 6000 milliamp hour battery altogether in this thing. I believe now attaching the Aeroactive cooler should put us right into advanced power modes. Man, every time you unlock it, it makes that sound. So Armory Crate is the app included with the ROG UI uh, flavor of Android that you can choose to use or you can use uh, choose to use like Asus's more kind of non-gamery Zen UI, which they use in like the Zen phone and, and that kind of stuff. And uh, here in Armory Crate, is this where I would choose power modes? Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, CPU, GPU, we got the temperature, we got the refresh rate maxed out. Networking enhancement, battery endurance is low, but I guess because, you know, those kind of, those gotta the play off and trade off with each other. You know, they, they don't get along well. Oh, change it. So you can change it to ultra durable. So we got way more battery lasting and then you can change it to X mode. So like I just went into the settings earlier and changed it to 165 Hertz manually. But then Armory Crate kind of will let you do this as like, you can set profiles and just switch between them like that. I'm confusing the CPU a lot right now. It's getting pretty mad. Aeroactive cooler, more settings. Uh, I can't, uh, I can't change things here. Now we are plugged in. Now we have maximum power. Ooh. It's going, I, I just, do you hear that? Yeah. Whoa. This is the most annoying thing about mobile games. Every time I do a video where it's like, and it involved me playing some sort of like high fidelity mobile game, I'm like, all right, let's do, let's, let's try it out. And then it's like, waiting 22 days later. One thing I wanted to talk about briefly was the fact that this is a gaming phone and yeah, it comes with the cool accessories and it's got the cooler and it's got the most powerful processor in an Android phone on the market and all that stuff. And that's cool. But is it good as like a phone? And I think that on a number of things, it is a little bit disappointing. It's IPX4, which is just splash proof, uh, you know, water resistance. They're promising two years of security updates and two Android OS updates, but other phone makers are promising three years or three OS updates, or even like four or five when it comes to like the OEMs. Other things I didn't talk about, audio. It's got the Cirrus Logic CS35L45 amp, just like the previous model. I wanted to talk about the speaker situation because unlike other phones, you also have these big bezels. 
Like this is a Pixel 3. And at this point it was already getting kind of old that we had bezels like this. So, but I understand why they put them there because I will appreciate front facing speakers, especially on a gaming phone, dude. The RAM situation is similar to the ROG 5 where you got 16 gigs on the 6 and 18 gigs on the 6 Pro. Yeah, the RAM is one of the few differences between the 6 and the 6 Pro. So like it's a $300 difference, but what are you getting? The, the rear display. The 6 doesn't have the animated display and the Pro does. So is that worth $300? That'll be up to you because everything else is the same, unless I'm wrong. This is how you move around. Okay, pretty cool. We found the, the game genie that lets us uh, configure the air triggers. Okay, ultrasonic buttons. Turn them on. Here we go, tap. Yeah, I'm tapping it, nice. There they are. I think the last time I did the ROG phone, I couldn't figure out the triggers. I was like, how do they work? Where are they? But like, to be fair, there's some configuration that has to happen. You can't just like drop in. So I guess that's still the argument for like a switch or a Steam Deck or something. The new air trigger system, apparently there's 14 different actions you can perform between like swiping left and right, swiping up and down, hitting certain parts of the screen. That's cool to have that uh, available to you. You know, you know what else is cool and available? Short circuit. Short circuit hoodie. Wow, you were just waiting for me to put that on. <laughs> oh man, I'm so gamer right now. Oh, and now the, the cooler's working. The lights are on. Okay, we're experiencing some technical difficulties with uh, the gaming side there, but suffice to say, for the, uh, for the hardcore gamers, you're gonna have some options available to you. You got some cool accessories. You got the armory crate to uh, make sure that you can customize your experience how you wanna do it. How do I get out of here? Crab Rave, show me what you got! Pretty good. Oh man. Yeah, this one is like missing a little bit of mids that this one fills out nicely. Um, we're on the 50 megapixel main shooter right now, I guess. And then there's a 0 0.6 option. That Okay, so that's using the 13 megapixel ultra wide now. I can shoot video at 8K and 24 FPS, 4K at 120. Slow motion mode. That's pretty good stabilization. Like, whoa. Whoa. I'm actually pretty impressed by that. What do you think, Jake? Uh, are, am I your favorite short circuit host? You're one of them. I'm one gonna, of 12 of my favorite hosts. I'm gonna burn it to the ground. Those photos aren't horrible. That's the ultra wide one, so it's gonna be a little less. This is the 50 megapixel highest quality. Lots of detail. Uh, colors are maybe a bit washed out. I mean, overall, it seems like it's like a decent camera for sure. I don't think that it's gonna let anyone super down. But again, why a macro lens instead of a telephoto? Just put that on. That's the selfie cam. Okay, now I'm in the macro mode. Oh man, you can tell that's only five megapixels. Is it dirty back here? That doesn't look like alloy at all. Yeah, now that I see like other photos, the color is definitely lacking. I mean, it could, it, it could tell that there was a lot of colors going on here, so it popped everything. Anyways, I think that's about enough playing around in a very non-professional way. The ROG Phone 6 Pro, it's a gaming phone. It has the top end mobile CPU you can get in a phone right now. It's got a crazy amount of RAM, 16 gigs or 18 gigs in the Pro version. It's got a completely unnecessary back display. It also doesn't have wireless charging. And I wonder if they didn't include it because of the rear display. So it's missing a few things that you definitely wanna see on a you know, thousand plus thousand dollar smartphone. On the other hand, it's got all these cool gaming features. So if you are somebody who is just like lives and breathes mobile gaming, it seems like this is one of the best options, if, if, if not the best option for the person who like absolutely needs that, you know, mobile gaming experience. But that's not me, I'm just Riley. And this is just short circuit. So subscribe if you want more heartfelt uh, sentiments like that from me. And probably not from me actually, from other people because they're never gonna let me back here again.